Here are 10 things I wish I would have known about actuarial science before I started studying it. Hi, I'm Bella Teal. Welcome to my channel. I am currently a junior at the University of Wisconsin-Madison studying both actuarial science and risk management and insurance. I have passed two actuarial exams, FM and P, and compared to what I knew freshman year about actuarial science, I knew barely anything. If you're currently considering majoring in actuarial science or are just interested to learn more about the career pathway, I'm here to give you some of the most important information that I've learned about actuarial science. First of all, can we just take a moment to acknowledge how gate kept information about the actuarial science career is? I feel like nobody knows what actuaries actually do unless you are an actuary or you've been studying to become an actuary for years. There are, of course, online resources that try their best to explain what actual science is, but they don't actually help you understand what an actuary is. So I hope that the tips that I share with you guys today, actually, you learn something from it. Number one. So first of all, let's talk about what an actuary actually does. There are many different kinds of actuaries, but generally an actuary is a person who uses math, statistics, and data to, for example, calculate premiums. So the prices that a person pays to an insurance company to protect, for example, their car, their house, or for health insurance. Overall, most actuaries work in the insurance industry. So if you are looking to become an actuary, make sure to get familiar with a lot of industry terms. Some of the things that an actuary might help to calculate are the expected losses for car damages, life expectancy for life insurance, and other liabilities that a company might face. They do this by estimating the risk of an event occurring using probabilities, statistics, and math. Number two, there are three main fields that actuaries work in. First is life insurance, second is health insurance, and third is property and casualty, like cars and homes. Recently, there have also been fields evolving in the actual industry to work on things such as cyber risk and autonomous cars, which I think is really fascinating. Actuaries can also work for consulting firms where they will work for specific clients that the business helps. Number three, let's talk about some of the stereotypes that come with each field of the industry. One thing that I've heard about life insurance is that it can be really repetitive because you are working on a quarterly basis and you do a lot of the same work each quarter. One thing that I've heard about working in the health insurance industry is that it can be very regulated due to the fact that the government is always coming out with new laws and new regulations, especially in health insurance. Some people may find this very restricting or very energizing. And one thing that I've heard about working as a consultant actuary is that you often have to work very late hours because the clients have a specific deadline that you have to meet and you don't get as many paid exam study hours. Number four, Something that I didn't know about actual science is that they actually use a lot of coding. Actuaries often work in programs like Excel and RStudio. And if you don't know what that is, it's where you have to manually write code in order to manipulate data that you're working with and other software programs such as Alteryx. Overall, if you don't have experience with coding, I would highly recommend taking a course on it or doing some online learning with it because no matter which field you go into, you're probably going to use at least a little bit of coding. Number five, on that same note, actuaries must also have a background in many other business related categories, such as finance, because actuaries often work with investments, bonds and annuities business law because insurance is made up of insurance contracts, high level calculus, and I'm talking at least calculus three or four because the work and math that actuaries do uses a lot of calculus, accounting, risk management, and of course actuaries must know generally how insurance works. I am the first and only person in my family who has decided to go into the insurance industry as an actuary. So coming in to this major, I had like no idea about insurance. I only knew that my family had it. Some of my classmates do have parents who are actuaries or work in the insurance field and they definitely have a leg up because they knew so much more about the fields than I did. For me personally, learning about the insurance industry has been a big learning curve because I don't have the parents I can use as resources to learn about the industry. Number six, I know a lot of students, including myself, are drawn to actuarial science because of the math and data statistics aspect, but make sure you know that actuarial science, a big part of it is working in insurance. So if you're not interested in working in the insurance industry, 
maybe go a different route. I will say though, however, even if you don't have the biggest interest in insurance itself, you can grow to like it as you learn more about it. Moving on to number seven, you must take all 10 actuarial exams. If you don't, you could risk losing your job. Unless you have a very, very flexible employer, and those are very rare to find. If you plan on becoming an actuary, plan on taking all 10 exams. If you only plan to take a couple exams and stop at the ASA certification and not to get your FSA, which is having taken all 10 exams, then I would maybe reconsider. The only reason I would say maybe reconsider is because if you don't take all 10 exams, you could either risk losing your job or you will not receive as high of a salary because the way that the actual science field works is that as you continue taking more and more exams, your salary goes up, which is the nice thing about actual science is that you kind of get to control your own salary. If you don't feel like making more money that year, you don't take any more exams. If you feel like getting a big bonus, you take three exams during the year. Of course, employers are flexible and they understand that life happens. So if there's a circumstance that doesn't allow you to take an exam for a year or two, they will probably understand. But I'm saying if you don't ever plan on taking all 10 exams, that might not work out as well. Number eight, keeping on the topic of exams, there are two organizations in which you can take the actual exams through. The first one and more popular one is the SOA, which is the Society of Actuaries. That is where a lot of people take their exams through if they are going the life insurance or health insurance route. On the other side, there is the CAS, which is the Casualty Actuary Society, and that is for aspiring actuaries who want to go into property and casualty fields. After you take your first two exams, FMNP, you have to decide which society you will be taking the rest of your exams through because unfortunately, if you take exams through the SOA, they don't count towards the exams in the CAS and the other way around as well. Number nine, this might come as a shock to you guys, but the actual exams are very hard. Are you used to getting straight A's in high school? Are you used to being a good student? Well, get ready to be knocked down. These exams are very hard. I'm talking harder than law exams. Law exam passing rates for the bar exam is around 60%. The average passing rate for actual exams is about 40%. Given that actuaries are some of the smartest people and the passing rate is still so low, it just talks to the level of difficulty that these exams have. Even in high school, I had taken a bunch of AP credit classes and honors classes, and I got A's in those, of course, with lots of studying. However, in college, for my actual science classes, they have been, I think, harder than AP classes, for me at least, and have taken more effort for me to even get a good grade. Number 10, something that I wish had been more emphasized to me before majoring in actual science is that it is a very narrow, specific, specialized field. If you decide to major in actual science, you are going to go into actual science 99% of the time because you are learning the very specific niche skills needed for that career. So if you have an interest in data science or computer science, along with actual science, I would suggest either double majoring or majoring in computer science and minoring in actual science if that's possible at your college. Because if you major in actual science and you end up actually wanting to go into computer science, you might not have the transferable skills for that. Hence, this is why I decided to double major in actual science and risk management and insurance. Although they are related fields, if I wanted to go into risk management, I could also do that. So I'm not completely stuck in actual science. Plus majoring in risk management and insurance also adds to my knowledge about the general insurance industry. Number 11, I included an extra special one for you guys. So one thing that you might have run across while researching the actual science industry is that sometimes people will describe it as being a creative field. Now, one thing that I had a misunderstanding of is that when people say actual science is a creative field, they don't mean the typical arts and crafts, colors, marketing, like all this design related stuff creative. What they mean is coming up with new insurance products, coming up with new ways to do calculations. So I just wanted to make that a clarifying point because that is something that 
I wish I could have understood more coming into this field. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you learned something from this. I know that if I had watched this as a younger version of myself, I would have learned a lot. If you guys are curious, I am going into the PNC industry because I find cyber risk and autonomous cars really interesting. I feel like with the PNC pathway, there's just a lot more innovation in it too. Like there's a lot of cyber risk uh, innovations and climate change innovations. In PNC, I also feel like you can work for cooler companies. Like you can work at Google as a cyber risk actuary. You can work at Uber or Lyft as a like car insurance actuary. You could work at Airbnb as a home rental insurance uh, actuary. For me personally, it just, it's a lot more um, exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more actual science related videos, just comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions, comment down below as well. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.